Thanks very much for signing in. Hopefully you know that this meeting is being recorded. Apologies to anybody who was looking for the recording of last week. We had a bit of technical and uh, operator issues, but this one's definitely being recorded and we'll put this out uh, tomorrow on the, the Development Mountain Biking Scotland channels. Uh, start off by saying a really, really big thanks to everybody for all the kind of positive messages and communications that have been going out around riders and around the communities over the last sort of week or so. It's been really, really helpful and really, really good to see everybody kind of pulling in the same direction and putting some shared messages out as well. So that's been really, really good. Um, in terms of tonight's session, we've got a wee agenda. We'll get an FLS update from, we've got John Ireland on the call again. We'll have a bit of discussion about non-FLS sites and how that can proceed. Uh, a bit of an update around developing mountain biking in Scotland activity, uh, around fundraising and some local activity. And then, like last week, there's a chance for a question and answer at the end. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the, the Q&A box and we'll go through them after we've heard from uh, John and Graham. So thanks very much for tuning in and I'll just hand over to John for a wee update from Forest and Land Scotland. Forest and Land Scotland. Hi, uh, John Irons here. I work for the Safety, Health and Wellbeing team in uh, Forestry and Land Scotland. Uh, um, yeah, thanks very much for coming along. It's great being able to kind of talk to you and uh, let you know what's happening there. Um, I was going to start with the East. We split Scotland into five regions, uh, imaginatively called uh, South, Central, West, East, North, and the things there. So East region. Um, we're still doing we're doing this kind of initial sat based so satellite photography based survey. Um, so we've got photographs of it before the storm, getting photographs of it after the storm. And that's going to inform the sites that we're going to fly with the helicopter. So the helicopter will then go out based on our kind of sat survey. Um, we're also using kind of like local knowledge, uh, having a look at bits. And we're going to do some drone survey work with our own internal staff that fly drones and stuff there. Now, currently, our kind of priority list is risk to life, risk to property, utilities, water supplies, etc. Uh, so that's our kind of top sites that we're looking at first, based on our sort of like uh, survey work things that we're doing. Um, we're looking to get as much stuff open as possible. You know, starting with the kind of the easier stuff, we're going to try and get stuff open for Christmas, uh, you know, like trails and stuff. There will definitely be sites that will not be open in the east. The east is pretty badly hit. Um, so they're working hard on sites that they can open, but they won't be open this week. I'll be to give you more of an update next week as to, you know, how we're getting on and then how you can get involved. We'll have a much better idea, especially after today's back stormy again as well. Um, I will have a much better idea how we're kind of getting on um, and, you know, what blocks we're kind of prioritising and things there for the East. Um, now, the South region, um, so Forest Roads and Glentress, they're clear. So Machine currently working in Inner Leithen to get roads open by the end of the week. Uh, and then it's going to move to Caberston to clear the roads in Caberston. Um, we still haven't got info on all the trails. Uh, Glen Tress, we're going to endeavour to try and clear some of the Waymark mountain bike trails by Christmas. And Inner Leithen downhill, we hope to get three of the trails open by Christmas. Uh, but the Make or Break trail there has got real serious damage on it. Um, we're still assessing A and Dalbiti, uh, see if we can get areas cleared there. Hope to get part of A open by Christmas. Uh, but catastrophic damage, so highly unlikely. Also, areas of Dalbiti, the same situation. Uh, maybe not too badly damaged. Hope to get some open by Christmas. But as I say, it'll depend on kind of like what happens uh, over the next couple of days, like with the stormy weather and stuff and things there. So they're kind of working hard. We'll have more of an idea on kind of stuff that you could possibly get involved with by next week you know once we've kind of triaged what we've got it's been quite a kind of catastrophic uh, blow for us so it's just taking a bit of kind of getting that initial survey work done uh on the bits there and it's the same with kind of like north region and things there the likes of um 
looking at the sort of different areas we've got. So the likes of, uh, you know, like lag and wolf tracks and things there. I'll have more information. Hoping to get stuff out to you Friday, could get stuff to Graham Friday. We should know better how we're kind of getting on. They're getting information together, but not kind of finalising, uh, you know, what, what we're up to there. Um, West doesn't seem to be too badly hit currently. Um, but we'll see what happens after tonight as well, as I say, on the on the bits there. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of as much as I've kind of got for you now. So kind of promising you jam tomorrow, but should have more information by Friday of kind of more detailed stuff and things. So we'll get that across to uh, DMBIS and we'll see what we can get out from there. Thanks very much, John. Uh, Thanks very much, John. There'll definitely be a couple of questions for you, but we'll, we'll kind of come to all the questions at the end. <clears throat> I know a few people tuning in are curious about other landowners that are not FLS and how to proceed or, or, or take things forward with them. So there's there's not a definitive Bible guideline here, but we'd certainly suggest there's, there's a reasonable approach you can take of contacting those landowners and getting a discussion going with them about the situation on their land or their estate. How does it look? Have they had a chance to get out themselves? Um, can you have that conversation with them to see if they agree that you can go and have a look? Is it safe enough for you to go there and inspect or make a review or even have a look at the access to some of the mountain bike trails? If there's significant damage, there's we certainly wouldn't encourage you to climb through, push through, go over trees. Definitely don't proceed in that case. Don't put yourself at risk uh, and don't put the landowner in a compromised position. If there's small level disruption, you know, no hanging trees, no serious disruption, if it's safe enough to do inspections and pairs and the landowner has allowed you to do that, then that'll help you make a plan. If there's significant chainsaw or machinery work that needs to be done, we'd certainly recommend working with the landowner on that. Shouldn't necessarily be led by trail associations. Um, if there's monetary requirements though, to make that happen, please let Development Mountain Bike in Scotland know. We're endeavouring to present the case to national agencies to supplement any local and regional level fundraising that groups are already trying to do. There's absolutely no guarantees on that, but obviously we want to make the best representation possible. And the best way we can do that is by being well informed about where there are challenges, which forests they're in, and, and, and how we can move that forward. If there is an opportunity to proceed safely with you know stuff that's more in line where usual trail maintenance work, so repair the actual trails after there's been some damage and that's approved by the landowner and it's safe to do so, that's really good. It would also be great if you could let us know if a trail inspector or whoever has signed that off to say it's open so that we can provide some level update to the riders who, who might want to go and ride there. Uh, it's much better for us if we get a message coming through um, <clears throat> with, with a degree of certainty and reliability so that we can then put that update on nationally. So hopefully that gives a wee bit of a message about how to work with uh, people outside of the FLS zones. Um, I'm just going to hand over now to the Head of Development Mountain Bike in Scotland, Graham McLean, and he'll tell you a bit about what, what they've been doing as well. Thanks, Will. Um, and, uh, hi, everyone, and thanks very much for the spreading of messages um, and also giving up your time to attend tonight. Um, um, yeah, two areas that we've been working on as well, um, and uh, one is funding um, and the other is communication. Um, for funding, what we've done is we've gone through and we flagged this up with uh, people who we think may be able to help in the, long, in the, in, um, in the short, medium and long term with this. Um, so we've been speaking to the enterprise agencies um, in the areas most affected, so that's Scottish Enterprise, who will deal with the East um, and the Central region, and South of Scotland Enterprise, um, who will deal with the South. Um, and we've also spoken to Scottish Government um, and other partners who may be able to help in, uh, <coughs> once we have a clearer idea of the state of, of the state of play. Uh, and that's really, that's really going to be the next stages of this as well. Um, I think that that flag's been put down. I think everybody needs to understand how much and, and what it's going to take um, to clear it and to get trails open as soon as we possibly can. Um, <coughs> we're really keen as well. We, we see that, that there'll be, a, I think there'll be a huge drive um, from yourselves, trails associations, to get trails open, obviously, and also from riders to do that. We want to find our ways, as, well as we're doing just now, to communicate that effectively and also facil to facilitate that as much as we can. 
Um, we do think that trails associations will also play an important part um, somewhere down the line um, of being able to be in a, a, a place where funding will be able to be spent and the trails will be able to be cleared through that as well. We're, we're currently, um, <coughs> we've set up the Scottish Trail Fund, which may be a vehicle for people to help to raise money through and into the trail network that's there. That's a charitable vehicle, so we're able to accept gift aid and um, also companies will be um, able to re reduce their tax um, liabilities um, um, uh, by feeding into that as well. And we have a good interest in the cycling industry to do that. Um, so we do think that there, there will be a need for funding. We do think trails associations um, will play an important role um, to distributing that funding across the country. Um, we already see that there's localised efforts to, to draw in funding um, and to draw in um, to do fundraisers. We, we really applaud that and think that's a great thing to do. If people can get on that and to do that, we think there will be the needs for funds for trails associations to do. So please feel free to do that. I don't think this will be a, we've got this, it's all in hand as a national approach. That's not what we're saying at all. What we really want to say is make sure that uh, groups go out and do that. And we, but we will be there and looking to help groups as much as we possibly can, but with no guarantees as well mentioned earlier. The second thing we're doing is, is we're really keen to communicate good and reliable information um, through to the mountain bike, um, uh, mountain biker and riders. Um, we've set up our web page with a quite a simple kind of overview of what's open, um, what's um, <coughs> open, where it's partially open and what is currently shut. Uh, we'll be looking to update that, um, particularly in line with the updates that will come from Forestry and Land Scotland, which will be on Mondays and Fridays. Um, and um, also as we get them through from trails associations. Uh, we do hear of trails being open and doing that, but we will be taking it from reliable sources. So we might hear that the summer has all been opened from somebody said on the internet, we'll be looking to take it from a bit more of a reliable source and we'll be looking to take it through from trails associations or from landowners. And at which point then we'll be looking to update our website uh, as quickly as we can possibly get to it. So ho hopefully that is all useful and, and, and good updates and certainly willing to take any questions on that um, along with questions to John as well. So thanks, thanks again. Thanks, Graham. I think first couple of questions are probably for you, John. A couple of ones coming in on a similar angle. Um, it seems to the public that trails to Glen Tress might be majorly clear at the moment. Um, is there any reason that those trails are not being opened? Um, probably they've still got kind of checking to do. There's more information coming out tomorrow. I know they've got more. And I was talking to them today. They've got more uh, kind of thinking about it and thoughts and stuff tomorrow. So I'll have a much better idea by Friday. So if you think Friday will probably be the, will be to give you more information on what's happening there. They might just be kind of working their way through it all just now, getting it and then declare it as kind of open. So I think. Yep, Grand John. And just sticking with that kind of Tweed Valley question, uh, when the harvesters kind of finished opening up Caberston, you mentioned. Will it be heading around kind of the other forests at Yarra Thorny Lee, or will it return to Glen Tress to kind of prioritise that, or is that maybe out with your knowledge at the minute? With my knowledge at the minute, it'll go with that kind of priorities of um, you know where they need to go for, say, if folks' water supplies have been trashed, or you know where we've got to kind of um, make sure we've got access to houses and stuff like that. So not sure, but we can figure. I'll, I'll know better. As I say, by Friday, we can get you some more, more information. So it's quite a dynamic situation just now. So it's quite hard to kind of keep. Up with what's happening where. Um, maybe there's a perception that there's a focus on the Tweed Valley of interest sites. Um, any, any updates from those other kind of sites? Um, no, I can find out. I'll know better. They've got, as I say, they've got more meetings getting together tomorrow, probably getting more information back in from other folks. So it's probably just as stuff as information kind of catches up with us, you know, that people are out looking at stuff and things, but not fed it back yet. So as I say, I know they've got more sort of discussions in the South region tomorrow morning. So I should know more by Friday, no problems, I think. Yeah, and a couple of comments in as well, one in the in the chat and, and a couple in the questions, just saying, you know, 
we we know FLS have a lot of big issues to deal with, and there there is a big thanks coming in from the mountain bike community. So, John, I don't know if you're able to pass that along to your colleagues and stuff, and say people do see the efforts, and you know it is appreciated. Um, yeah, no, I can pass that on. That's great. Yeah. And one for Graham here. If if there isn't a trail association in the area, is there other ways that people can help get things moving? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think so. I think it's just following the same sort of procedures as as they have with trails associations. To be honest, so if, if it is an, an FLS landowner, it's getting in touch with them, just saying that the, the, you know you you use the you use the woods for recreation and for mountain biking, and you'll be willing to help and just throw that out there to them. Um, I suspect having um the organisation such a trails association behind it that does help that like the landowners do like to know that they're working with the right next group but not always uh, we've done it we've seen it quite a bit across the country where local groups or uh, local people can get together and can do really good work with landowners so what i would say as well is, is if it's we're not on fls land it's get in touch with them if it is an fls land that you're looking to work with them it's just i think what john's saying as well it's just just a little bit more time it's getting there there's another storm um due coming in um, tonight and, and tomorrow, so there needs to be another assessment of the damage. There's still a look at it um, on a fairly macro level and some some massive estate that's there. So I think it's um, I think it is a case of um, doing that. I think if you do get in, it's stay in touch with ourselves as well. We are, we are here to help. Um, there'll be a capacity that, that we'll have to deal with it, and, and there'll be some areas we'll be able to help more than others. Um, being honest, where we have regional coordinators and we have that local funding support to put them in place, we, we will be able to help more. But we do, we are interested to see where people are trying to help, trying to do good things, trying to do it right, and we will endeavour to help um, as best as we can. And we do consider as well, you know, like this, the Scottish Trail Fund, I, I can't see it all going through trails associations. We really do see the value in local riding spots um, and to get them open will be one of our priorities as well. There's a few people from cycle clubs on, Graham, saying what can they do to get involved or how can they support the trails associations? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I think it's going to be we're just at that we're at the slight stage where it's it's hopefully going to break through that that we really understand which forests will be safer. I think for people to go into, um, and, and for people to be to then do an inspection of them. Once we have that more micro detail of what's required, whether it's a reroute, whether it's uh, whether it's just a, a few um, a few trees down across the, the extent of a route. Um, whether it's one or two, or whether it's a complete, you know, a, you know, a complete, the trails are complete right off. Once we know more of where, where that's at, that at that level, I think that that will be the time that trails associations, local groups, can then all pull in together. We can fundraise together. We can look to do clean dig days together. But we, the most important thing, though, and the, is that everybody stays safe through it. The worst case that we could have within this is that somebody goes into the woods, gets hurt as a result of doing it. And then, then we end up having to, that then the dialogue becomes more challenging. So that I know that it's frustrating to not have an immediate answers and people want to get going into this, particularly if they can see that an individual forest block or something is there. But I think we need to sort of have a, a level of trust in the process as we go through this and, and working together through that. I think if we do that, we build up that relationship as well. I think one other thing that was mentioned last week that John mentioned was around opportunities that might come from this as well as we go to restock forest and other areas. I think we want to put ourselves as mountain bike community in the best possible place to take advantage of those opportunities as we can. So that that would be what I say to that. Thanks. Uh, John, for you, um, pre-storm, there was areas marked out in different forests, you know, marked up with tape ready for felling or surveys or whatever and I think that's the case in all the affected areas is that work kind of all paused now just for the clear up operation or is it a case of FLS or balancing both work streams it'll be balancing both work streams because we still need to keep kind of like timber supplies going we'll have committed to x cubic meters of timber being delivered per week sort of stuff so if we spend all our time working in windblow stuff that's like slow to harvest and maybe not the right species or not being able to cut the right size logs and things out of that we'll have to kind of balance the supply and demand sort of thing with tidying up stuff yeah 
Thanks, John. Um, there's, there's a question, and I'll answer it first, maybe before you come in, John. Why isn't the FLS asking for help? There's trained trail assessors and, and willing people out there. I think from a from our point of view at Development Mountain Bike in Scotland, Forcing and Scotland certainly have asked from help from, from several sources, but there is a balance of what's safe and who, who can do things at the moment. Um, I certainly think there's been good dialogue on some levels, um, but maybe, John, you might want to expand on that. Yeah, it's also that kind of, you know, that we've got to figure out the areas first and then like kind of triage it from there. And then we could like divvy up the work from there sort of thing. But it's that figuring it out stage just takes a wee while to do. And it's just that give us a wee bit of, us a wee bit of slack while we figure that out. And then we'll be getting back to you sort of thing going, uh, yeah, I think we could be in this bit or this bit, you know. And in regards to FLS sites, obviously there's the, the stains and, and the way marked trails. There's obviously a large network of mountain bike trails outside of that, which which we all know exists. What would be the steps for the groups that want to inspect and, and get back into those, John? It'll be the same sort of thing, and we'll need to kind of triage. There'll be some areas where it'll be relatively straightforward to get back into and maybe do a bit of clearance and things, and there'll be other areas where it'll just be kind of wiped out, I would say. We will need to just figure that out. That's that kind of, um, you know, gathering the data together. And there'll be other areas, I suppose, that we'll have to kind of go, that's a priority or whatever, based on, you know, what we know is the, um, the pressures. Um, good, good point in here as well. If it's, if it's not an FLS site, uh, it may well be an insurance company that needs to be contacted or there may be insurance companies involved in the process, not just landowners. So that's uh, that's maybe a little bit of an extra complication. Yeah, I'd, I'd still say in the first instance attempt to go for the landowner um, and, and they may refer people on to, to, to insurance companies or indeed to state managers. Um, we've seen that happen quite a bit as well where state managers will get involved as well. And I, I, I think going through the landowner as a first port call is probably safest. That just, just means that you're getting directly in there and then you're taking your advice of who you deal with um, from them afterwards. Thanks, Graham. And another another comment, kind of saying just it's good to have a collective voice on this, and it, it emphasises how important access is. And this is maybe something that'll that'll bind us together and be help us through some of the challenges we're facing at the minute. Um, yeah, it, it reminds me of food and mouth. If anyone remembers that, where the kind of restriction to the countryside was really felt, and a lot of good stuff came out of the foot and mouth stuff, you know, with people realised how valuable the countryside was and access to it and how important it was. So you could see similar with the kind of the storm damage and the kind of limitations and how that affects people, you know. Yep. Yeah. Um, this one, just um, to gain us a Glen Tress specific question, John, it looks like there's been people around prioritised the road access and had harvesters in um, but are, are you still not in a position to allow other people to come in and help do trail inspections or, or tra clear any of the trail centre trails there? Oh, the pressure's got to John's internet. We'll give him a second to come back in. I don't know if you want to add something there, Graham. Not really. It's quite a John specific, uh, a John specific question. I think I don't really have any anything to add on that one. And um, hopefully John will be able to come back in. Yeah. Improves. Yeah. There is the question about clarity over what comes next for trail associations, whether it's inspections or whether FLS will lead inspections, or whether trail associations can come straight in on trail maintenance. I would say that's quite situation dependent. Um, obviously, a lot of trail associations are working across both FLS and private landowner sites. So that discussion with whoever the landowner is will be quite important in dictating what the next steps are. Kind of some of the stuff I mentioned earlier. If there's an area that's had 
relatively minimal damage and there's no hanging trees and no great debris, trail associations will be able to get straight back into trail maintenance and actually getting that trail network back in place. That trail network back in place. You're back with us, John. You're back with us, John. Yeah, sorry, I keep dropping out. The getting stormy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's tough, uh, I, I missed the questions and things there. Sorry if you were asking me questions. Uh, I think the last one for you is about, about Glen Tress. I'm just wondering, what, now that the roads are cleared and stuff like that, there's still no real opportunity for people to come in and volunteer to clear the, the purpose-built trail network. Yeah, well, if you give us a wee few days to work on that. We'll see what the uh, opportunities are. We can discuss that with kind of like local staff and things there. And what about folk that want to just go in and ride on the forest roads at the moment? What's the situation around that? Um, well, they're certainly changing the message from don't go to the forest to, or they were changing the message from don't go to the forest to go to, you know, you can be in the forest, but obey the signage. Uh, I think that's maybe key here. We don't necessarily want to invite more people in and, and put people at danger, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's like I was reading the you know the latest message there. They changed it yesterday, sort of thing. So there's a slight different emphasis on it. And for non-FLS sites, sometimes it's hard to find the landowner. Is there any other sources that either you or, you or Graham know about apart from land registry to find who it is if people want to get involved and help help with the clear up? Local word of mouth. Yeah, I think John's struggling again. Yeah, um, I, I think um, I think uh, local word of mouth can be useful. I think uh, a, a access officers within local authorities also seem also in my experience have, have really good knowledge of landowners and landowner situations as well. Um, I would um, also say please. Uh, um, please drop us a line as well get in touch with ourselves and see if we can help as well um with, with that as well so sometimes sometimes we can sometimes we can't if not we can just try and refer to onto a good a good source of local knowledge as well i've seen somebody else popped up on the box there who owns scotland which is good it isn't it isn't always complete but it is a good starting place as well so google who owns scotland is a, is a good starting place as well your your local community council Are we good? How are we getting? Have we got one? Well, I think there's another question coming in there. Well, as well as John, how are you getting on, John? Are you holding in? Are you hearing us? Yeah, occasionally it just keeps cutting in and out, hanging in there. Keep going. Oh, lost you again. I think a couple of us are struggling with the connection. Um, there seems to be, and it's, uh, some people are saying that forest roads and forest access was reopened last Thursday, but I don't think that's universally the case, John, is it? No, it wasn't, no. Um, but, you know, they did open up stuff kind of locally and things, but didn't advertise it as open. But it was, you know, they, they cleared it. But the, the message was still stay away while we were sorting it. It's just that complexity of, uh, it's a complex message to get across of the kind of where to go and where not to go. So they decided to keep the message as the, don't go sort of thing, but there was, you know, stuff had been cleared. Yeah. And um, is this a good opportunity, John? Obviously, we kind of had that chat earlier about there's a big network that's not part of the Purpose Built Trail Network. Is this a good time to sanction some of the wild trails or look at solutions for replacing some of those? Uh, potentially. The, um, you know, if you think of the kind of the, the trail guidance stuff, um, it was whether you, you want them adopted or not, you know, with the sort of the, the different management styles and things. But 
it's that um, you know how, how many trails can that area hold? So you know if there's an area that's been wiped out and there's uh, the trails have disappeared or whatever, there might be opportunities to look at other bits, you know. But it but it's that complex jigsaw of land management, you know. Has to fit in. I mean, I was looking at a site the other day that was on a triple SI kind of ancient oak woodland site. And you're just like, no, I can't stay, you know, we need to move. And yet down the road from it, perfectly good kind of legitimate site. So it's just that kind of fitting stuff in with uh, everything else that goes on in our other kind of statutory obligations, you know. Yeah. Uh I appreciate this is a stretch for you asking you to know about every region and every forest, John, but is there any kind of update on Murray, Murrayshire Forest? Is there much damage? Is there many places open? Um, not for, uh, no, uh, from the, there's not that kind of detailed update from East, but I can see what I can find out for Friday and things there. I think Murray had got off relatively compared to kind of further East, sort of thing. Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. Yeah. I think the questions are, are dying down a bit, folks. Um, so if you have any last ones, fire them in there now. Um, and good good note from Mark there. It's, a, it's just a question of waiting a wee bit of time. Hopefully there'll be some sessions coming up with the likes of trail ferries and trail associations once it's safe to get in there um, later in the month. So as John said earlier, there's a the hope to get Quite a few trails there open, kind of in the lead up to Christmas and early in the new year. And obviously a lot of momentum, kind of with some local groups doing some fundraising and getting prepared for early 2020 reinstatement sessions. So hopefully with, it's a bad phrase to use, with a good tailwind, uh, we can all make progress towards that. Yeah, there's a lot of good opportunities. You know, there's a lot of good can come out of the kind of devastation, you know. Think of like, you know, similar with what happened with food and mouth, similar with what's been happening with the pandemic. You know, people realised how important the countryside was and kind of access and use of the countryside, you know. Yeah. Okay. It looks like that's all the questions answered for this evening. Um, thanks very much to everybody for listening in. Really appreciate everybody's time and every, all the efforts you're actually making in your own communities as well. It's really, really helpful for us. Um, and... I don't know if I'll just pass back to John or Graham just for any closing remarks, anything we've missed. I know. Thanks very much for coming along and listening and promise to get you an update for Friday so we get kind of more detailed information out there. We should be able to build more kind of detail for everywhere sort of thing. Yeah. Um... Yeah, likewise, just just same sort of message. Thanks very much for everyone. I uh, realise that people are, are, are really keen to get in and help, and I think that um, I, I think that's great. That's great to see. Um, I think we I think we need to move it from that sort of state of it being kind of macro looking at it and getting people to sort it to to being able to enable people to come in and help. And um, and also as well from a communication perspective, I think it is going to become more nuanced as well over the bit. So not everywhere is going to become all open or, or all closed. Um, and I think I think we're going to have to be good at sharing those messages as well. Um, and doing that is, is going to be a, a more nuanced and a little more of a sophisticated message that needs to get put out. Not all closed, not all open. It will be a little a lot more site dependent in doing that. We hope to play a part in that. Um, and, and really, you know, thank your help um, for also sharing and being a part of that as well. Um, and yeah, let's let's hope we can get in and get the trails open as soon as we possibly can as well. Thanks. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, John. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, keep an eye on social media. There'll be plenty of updates coming out in due course. Okay. Thanks very much. Excellent. Thanks very much.